and welcome to the episode 11 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. We're having a short but very sweet episode today, with lots of positive news and nice curiosities. Let's start with the 11th of January 1962. On that date, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. As coincidence has it, the band had another such lunchtime engagement exactly one year later, in 1963. After performing at the Cavern, though, the Beatles jumped on their trusted van to reach one of the two venues of their evening engagements, the Plaza Ballroom, Old Hill, in the Midlands. The adverse weather conditions and the strong winds – it was the coldest night on record for seven years – made it impossible for them to reach the second venue, the Ritz Ballroom, in Birmingham, and so that engagement was postponed to the 15th of February. These first two entries display what changed between 1962 and 1963 for the Beatles. In early 1962, the band had exploded locally, but was still virtually unknown around the country and found hard to receive bookings from outside the Liverpool area. The lads kept themselves busy playing show after show, but they started to feel restless about their confinement to the local scene. 1963 saw the Beatles making it exponentially, on a national level, with a schedule of performances and engagements that became even more frantic than 1962's. And a key element of this growth was their second single, Please Please Me, released today across the UK. It would eventually sell enough to be considered the number one single figuring at that spot on some charts, including that of New Musical Express and Melody Maker, two of the biggest music publications of the era. On the other hand, since there was no single official and national sales source, one could argue that Please Please Me actually reached only number two in other publication charts. Regardless, the release was instrumental to make the Beatles a household name and to put the band in the big league once and for all. It could be said that the Beatles faced the challenge giving it all they had, but they had much more to give. A further quantum leap in engagements and consequent effort was waiting for them in 1964. Talking about 1964, on the 11th of January of that year, the now Fab Four were featured in the 16th and last night of the Beatles Christmas special at the Astoria Cinema in London. I bet that after another successful routine appearance, the lads had their minds switched on to their next big step, Paris. We will abundantly cover that further down the line, but in the meantime, on the 11th of January 1965, the Beatles were featured in the Another Beatles Christmas Show production at the Odeon Cinema in Hammersmith, London. Do I need to tell you that they were involved in the two comedy sketches and the 11 song performance that closed both houses? Well, <laughs> I just did. And so, let's move forward to 1967 and to a very musical evening. Watching a broadcast of Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 in F major on BBC Two's Masterworks, Paul McCartney decided he wanted the sound of piccolo trumpet on Penny Lane. In the Brandenburg Concerto, the instrument was played by David Mason. You might want to remember the name, just in case. But the day of musical wonders wasn't over. That same evening, Paul and Ringo went to the Bag of Nails Club in London to see a new musician recently arrived from the United States, a guitarist called Jimi Hendrix. The two had a blast, and the Beatles and Paul McCartney in particular developed a very good friendship with Hendrix in the months to come. Finally, Let's close this episode with the 1968 George Harrison recording session in Bombay, India, taking place at the EMI's facilities between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. local time. 
The session was meant to continue working on George's solo effort for the soundtrack of the film Wonderwall. And now, once again, it's time to remind you to please check www.simonmas.com support to find ways to support this podcast and my other music-related projects. Remember that even sharing my work on your social media can greatly help me, giving me a chance to get heard. In addition, please notice that the episode description has an Amazon affiliate link containing all the sources, books and otherwise, that I use to write these episodes, should you feel like delving into the material by yourself. Buying through that link will allow me to make some pennies off Amazon's money without affecting the price of the items you choose to buy. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.